and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome those that watch this TV program to stay with us and be blessed by the preaching of God's Word. <clears throat> Paul in 1 Corinthians said that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The preaching of the gospel. If you take your Bibles and open up to <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 starting with verse 1. At this time in history, <clears throat> the Lord's church has come a long way. We must be able to look around and tell whether the church is growing and maturing or is it declining in preaching the old Jerusalem gospel as it was in the days of the apostles. I believe, first of all, in order for Christians to preach the old Jerusalem gospel as it was in the days of the apostles, they must be humble people. They must be people who recognize that I was lost, but now I'm found. They must be people who recognize, as John said unto Jesus, <clears throat> I have need to be baptized of thee. Who, there's one coming after me who is... Uh, <clears throat> mightier than I, whose shoes are that I am not worthy to unlatch it. We must be like the Apostle John in two or three places. <clears throat> and the angel, when John would fall down and worship the angel, and the angel would say, get up, worship God only. Even Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, when he was led out in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, that uh, one, one of the temptations that the devil tried to ca cause Jesus to fall into was to fall down and worship him. And Jesus, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. We must have that attitude to be effective Christians that we will cause, we will see, we will be behind and support the old Jerusalem gospel as was preached in the days of the apostles. <clears throat> Sometimes <clears throat> because society has, now I'm just talking about society, I'm not talking about the kingdom of God, that society has <clears throat> moved forward such, in a, such a rapid pace. Our technology is in a, a, a state that it never has been in, in the world, in history. We have such great technology that it's out of this world. But yet, we still cannot get the gospel preached as it was in the days of the apostles. How do I know that? Well, when we read in Acts chapter 17, the Bible says <clears throat> that the gospel that the apostles preached was turning the world upside down. You see, it was caused to be a different than the way man and society likes it. And it makes the world angry because it turned the world upside down. It ought to be said that when the, the apostles preached the gospel, that it turned the world the right side up, the right way, okay, the way it should be. Anyone, anyone can look around and see that this world is turned upside down. <coughs> Today we uh, hear people say that <clears throat> right is wrong and wrong is right. Well, that's completely upside down. And the way people think about sin, whatever sin it might be, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> sin is simply disobedience to God. And no matter what sin it is, murder, adultery, not studying the word, not praying, that's sin. That's disobedience to God. <coughs> God tells us what we need to stay away from, and we need to obey Him and stay away from that. 
Then, on the other hand, God tells us what we need to be doing, and we need to obey Him and do it. And when we don't, it's disobedience to God. That's what sin is, all in a nutshell. And we, we live in a society where we don't care anymore about one sin or another. We've accepted some sins and other sins. We think that they're blasphemous. Oh, look at the, how bad that sin is when we tolerate this sin. You see, we live in a society where we're slowly declining as the Lord's church Slowly declining and accepting sin to where we no longer say, that. well, that's not so bad. It is always that bad in the eyes of God, you see. And that's what we're going to try to understand this morning when we read the Scriptures. Our focus upon the lost and dying world. Why is the world lost and going to hell? It's because of sin. Okay, We need to not focus our attention so much upon a lot of other things, but on sin. We need to be able to have the wisdom to know what sin is and how does God look at it and what will be the end conclusion of sin. <clears throat> Starting in verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 2. He's talking to the church, okay? He's talking to the Christian. He's talking to the one that have repented of their sins and have been baptized by immersion to have those sins washed away and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you have he quickened. That word quickened means made alive. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. I was dead in trespasses and sins. Before I was baptized into Jesus Christ, I was dead in those trespasses and sins. I was dead because of my disobedience to God. I was dead. That word dead means separated from God and going to hell. <clears throat> Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yes, we all in time past walked in the course of this world, and we can even bring that even closer home. We walked a lifestyle which pleased us the way we wanted it, okay? <clears throat> and according to the prince and power of the air, who is the prince and power of the air? Satan, the old devil. He is the prince and power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience, whether one has been baptized into Jesus Christ or not, are children of disobedience when they disobey God. Okay? And the only reason that a person disobeys God because they have that spirit, they have that influence that Satan provides, okay? Satan would never tell you to obey God, but he will always tell you to disobey God. Among whom also we all had our conversation, that word conversation means attitude and lifestyle. We all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. You see, even the apostles, even the apostle Peter, when people... Uh, especially in the Catholic Church, calls him a saint. And then other people who've been baptized into Jesus Christ don't call them saints. Even the Apostle Peter said that he walked in the lust of the flesh in times past, you see, in his old lifestyle. Apostle Paul said the same thing. Matter of fact, <clears throat> Paul said that I'm crucified with Christ. He crucified the old man. You see, he put it to death because he was walking in the lust of his flesh in times past, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Yeah, just stop and think about that. What, just think about what the mind can bring about and cause the flesh to do. Yeah, the mind's a powerful thing. And it can cause 
a flesh, a body, a person to sin against God. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It was our nature to sin, okay, before we become Christians. It didn't bother us. We didn't look at it that way. Because that's something we wanted to do. It was pleasing. It was desirous. That's what we wanted. And so we were by nature to the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. God is rich in mercy. <clears throat> Mercy is showing mercy, or mercy is showing peace and kindness and undeserved kindness to those who were his enemies. And he has done that from the Old Testament to the New. God has shown mercy upon mankind. And in doing so, <clears throat> in his great love wherewith he loved us, God loved his enemies. God loved those who hated him. God loved those who did wrong to him. You see, God loved those people who were disobedient to him. Even when we were dead in sins, has he quickened us together with Christ? Yes. All men except for Jesus Christ, all people, were dead to sin. Yeah, because of our sins, we were dead. We were separated from God. But God has quickened us together. He made us alive together with Christ. When Jesus <clears throat> died, was buried, and on the third day arose from the dead and never die again, we also, in like manner, we die when we're baptized in Jesus Christ, we're buried with him, and we rise from the dead, being dead to sin. That's what he's talking about. We're <coughs> Excuse me. We have been made alive together with Christ. For by grace, you are saved. Now, you can't take that word grace away from the rest of the word of God, okay? When you use the word grace, you are saved, that doesn't, isn't all the information we find in the Bible on the subject of being saved, you see. But it is true, it's by grace you are saved. This grace was brought about in the Old Testament and brought over into the New Testament, Grace is unmerited favor. You see, we can't be saved by our good works. I don't care how good of a person you are. I know my mother believed that the good that she did overcome the bad. Okay? But that's simply not true. Now, according to the Bible, you cannot be saved by your good works. It's by grace that you're saved. You see, we're saved by unmerited favor. Mer being merited would be our good works. But unmerited means not by our good works, okay? We were saved because of God's grace. Another way you can put that. God's grace at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. God's grace at Christ's expense. It cost Jesus Christ his life on the cross in order for you all and us and me to have God's riches. Okay? God's riches at Christ's expense. That's grace. You know, in, especially I remember going to Haiti and these people were humble. These people will carry you Put you on chairs and carry you so that you don't have to, your feet don't have to touch the ground. These people will serve you. These people will look up to you. These people will think that you know everything and you have everything. And they will be your servant and do it willingly. You see, in our society most of the time, we don't think of ourselves that way. We don't look up to God. Okay? We don't look up to him and think he knows everything and he can do everything and <clears throat> he deserves us serving him. We don't always see it that way because it's by our nature that we think of ourselves first. You see? Now, 
some people are, are worse at it than others. You know, thinking of ourselves first. Sometimes we have to stop and think. Or we have to be told. Or we have to be taught to be considerate of others. And so God, Jesus said that if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, then you have to be a servant. You have to be a minister. Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve and give his life a ransom for many. That is talking about the Christian today. That's how our attitude ought to be towards the Lord Jesus Christ, not on him only, but to a lost and dying world. We are servants to go and serve and tell people about Jesus. And we will do that if we understand that God shed His grace on us. We're saved by His grace. He didn't have to do that. Okay? But He loved us. He wanted to. He desired to. He longed for us to be saved from sin and death and hell. That's His attitude toward us. What's our attitude towards God? Do we, want, do we want the same attitude? Do we want to show him the same kind of love that he showed us? It ought to be. <clears throat> and has raised us up together. Raised who up together? Every person that went down that water grave of baptism and come up out of that water grave of baptism was raised up with Jesus Christ. You see, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> now, we're not up in that spiritual kingdom right now, okay? But we are in the kingdom of God right now here in this world because God made it possible. We are the kingdom of God. And when we grow mature in our faith, the things that we do to do that... <clears throat> is a part of us being sit together in heavenly places. You see, this morning, because of the divine word, the divine commandment, to meet together on this divine day, the first day of the week, and we have obeyed the Lord in doing so, we are sitting together in a heavenly place with Christ Jesus. Now, we, we ought to have joy because of that. Okay? We ought, because of our studying the word of God and believing it to be true, <clears throat> we ought to be excited that we're sitting in the heavenly place with Christ Jesus because God said it to be so. That in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus Christ that God shows the riches of His grace, His kindness toward us, he has seen the great and precious promises like the Bible says. It's in Jesus Christ. Is that a one-time thing? No. You see, we need to understand, when I first become a Christian, when I first repented of my sins, was baptized in Jesus Christ, I came over that water grave, and I was in joy. I was excited. I had a new life now. And I could build upon it. Well... There were exceedingly great and uh, precious promises given unto me then. But you know, they're still promised to me today, here some 30-some years later. I would have never had those precious promises had I not obeyed the gospel. And I will not continue to have those great and precious promises unless I'm going to be a lowly servant of Jesus Christ. You see? I must accept the fact that I'm not worthy of heaven. I'm not worthy of the Father in heaven. I'm not worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not worthy of Him dying on the cross. I'm not worthy of His covenant, His promises, His blessings. I'm not worthy of heaven itself. But because of the promise that God made, the opportunity that God gives... That we can be covered with the blood of Jesus and when we are, God sees the blood. He makes me worthy then. Nothing I do of myself, but He makes me worthy by His Son's blood, you see. 
And therefore, I am promised those exceeding precious promises. And I need to be seeking them out. I should be desiring them every day. I should be longing for them. And I won't spend much time looking for them if my mind, my body, my flesh, if my existence is somewhere else. You see, I must train my thoughts. I must discipline my thoughts and intents every day to go to the Father in heaven and be desirous of His promises, His blessings, all the good that He can give me, you see. And He is waiting with open arms. He is waiting to dash each one of us and give us, (coughs) excuse me, everything that we need Help us live in this life. To bless us. To bring joy in our life. To where we're happy and excited about Jesus in our eternal life. He is just waiting to bless each one of us in that way. He wants to. And He is sad when we don't let Him do that. You see? You're talking about of having a, a gift box that's overflowing. The rock's about ready to bust off the box that he's got so many great gifts and blessings to give you and me. And he wants to empty it out. Brethren, I'm telling you, we're saved by his grace. You see? Now we can take that the wrong way. Verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 that uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Some like to take this verse of Scripture and teach that faith only You're saved by God's grace through faith only. You see, faith only is no faith at all. Okay? Faith only is just the noun, the name of that word, faith. That's all it is. But when we put works with faith, then it is faith. That's when we begin to trust God and take Him for His word, what He says. You see? That's faith. You haven't seen God? You haven't seen that eternal kingdom? We today haven't even seen Jesus. Okay? We're taking, putting our life on the line for this book. What it says. That's faith. You see? Hebrews 11, 6, the Bible says, Without faith it's impossible to please Him. For those who, who, for we must believe that He is, and He's a, Rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, we might put it this way. Without the study of God's Word, it'd be impossible to please God because we would not know how to please God without the Word of God. Some preachers teach, for by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Other words, there's nothing that we have to do. <laughs> okay? Don't do a thing. And you'll be saved. Verse 9 it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. They say we're not saved by works. But that's true, we're not saved by works. <laughs> that's where grace comes in. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is God giving us things that we don't deserve. That's grace. But at the same time, we're not saved by works, but we're saved for works, and that's what that's talking about. <clears throat> we're saved for works. Because so you go to the next verse, for we are His workmanship. If we're His workmanship, what are we doing? We're doing His works. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We are created for works. We are created for good works. And we, they are ordained and we should walk in them, the Bible says. <coughs> so really, these verses from 
<clears throat> verse 7 to 10 aren't for a person who's not a Christian in the beginning, in the first place. We shouldn't tell these two pe things to people who are not Christians. These are to the Christian, to the church. And we've got preachers teaching people who are not Christians that you're saved by grace and not by works. They're not allowed to teach this and be pleasing to God to a people, person that's not a Christian. See what the devil does? He'll take places in the Bible and his ministers will teach it to people whom it is not for. In 1 Peter, if you'll turn over with me, please. In verse 9, <clears throat> chapter 2, in verse 9, <clears throat> the Apostle Peter wrote these words, and this is talking to the church, okay? It's not talking to people who are not Christians. It's not talking to people who believe in faith only, Okay? Because that's not faith at all. Faith only is just a simply a noun. It's the name for the word. Verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. These are works, Okay? These are our words. When we're saved by grace, when we repent of our sins and are baptized and our sins are washed away, we are in a saved condition. But not before then. If we still are in our sins and those sins have been washed away the way the Bible says, we're still in them sins and we're not in a saved condition yet. It's after we're baptized, the Bible says our sins are forgiven, then we're in a saved condition. <clears throat> when we do that, we become a chosen generation. Yeah, not the Jews of old, but those who have been baptized into Jesus Christ have become a part of a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, both male and female in the Lord's church, become a part of that royal priesthood. <clears throat> That's how God sees you and me. And holy nation. Yeah, we have many nations in this here world today. But the church of Jesus Christ, the one he died for, is in all of itself a holy nation. All over the world there are people who have believed the word of God and have been obedient to the gospel, repented of their sins, have been baptized into Jesus Christ, had their sins washed away, and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and God adds them to his church, his kingdom. They become a part of that holy nation. A peculiar people. The world needs to look at us because of our love and our service to the Lord Jesus Christ and say they're peculiar Then result of being a chosen generation or royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, is that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. One of the greatest responsibilities of every Christian in the Lord's church is to show praises to him. Okay? Our attitude ought to be that I don't want to leave a day behind that I have not praised the one who died for me. I have not praised the one who brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. We need to be praising God. Satan don't want us to do that. 
the worldly things of this life that we have to, that we also enjoy and we have to be around, do not want us to praise God. You see, when we fill our lives with worldly things, we fill it with the influence of not praising God. It's just not there. The Bible says we should have joy. But if you don't have joy in your life right now, it's because it's not there. <clears throat> it's not there to be found. And therefore, you and I, we need to do something about that. Don't leave it that way. Let's do the right things that will bring that joy out. You ever found people that you just enjoy being around? It's because it's in them. <laughs> okay? It's really, truly there. There's nothing, <clears throat> excuse me, false about it. It's all genuine. It's really there. And you and I, today as Christians, the Bible promises joy within. And if you don't have the joy within, it's because it's not there. But it can be. You see, it can be. Let's go on down. <clears throat> Verse 10. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. I wasn't a child of God to obey the gospel was baptized in Jesus Christ. Now I am a child of God. <clears throat> Which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. <coughs> and that can be brought about in various different ways. Okay, The world's full of avenues to cause you and I to lust. Okay, It's full of avenues. Well, it's not the lust it's telling us to stay away from. It's the avenues that are put before us that can bring that about. We have that responsibility to stay away from that. Having your conversation, your lifestyle, your conduct honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, <clears throat> You're the light of the world. Let your light shine so that they that are lost in the world may glorify your Father in heaven by your good works, by your light that you let shine. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. <clears throat> we must be careful. <clears throat> we must be careful when we're criticizing government officials. Okay? I'm not saying it's wrong to, but we must be careful how we do it. We must be careful how we criticize the lost and dying world. It's not wrong to, but we must be careful how we do it. So that we might put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. People who look at the church, the Christian today, and say that we are peculiar. When people look at the church today and say, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to give my tithes and offerings. I'm not going to get up and sing those songs. And I'm not going to be around that preacher or, or the Bible or Christian people. I'm not going to do those things. Well, when we let our light shine, when we submit ourselves to God, the Bible says we'll put to silence the ignorance of foolish people, foolish men, okay? It'll put them to silence. It has to be genuine. It has to be really there in order for that to happen. Because, see, we're being watched. And they're going to detect if there's the slightest flaw, even though God allows us to make flaws, okay? Because he knows we're human. 
But if, we, if there is the slightest flaw, they'll be on us like they are Donald Trump. You see? They'll be on us. They will. They'll tell, tell their buddies and uh, the, the church gets a bad name. So we must let our shine, light shine and it must be genuine within us. And we'll put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. <clears throat> We're not to use our liberty that we have in Christ as a license to sin. Because I've been saved by grace. Because my sins have been washed away. Because I'm a child of God. Because God is my Savior. He's my King. Does not give me the license to sin. It does not give me the license to be disobedient to what God says to do. I like to use that term disobedience because we categorize sin. One sin is worse than an, another sin in our minds. God does not. But we use the word disobedience, then it's not categorized, okay? <clears throat> it goes all straight across the board. Drunkard, homosexuality, an adulterer, a thief, and there's others. Or if you're not praying, if you're not studying God's Word, if you're not having, having fellowship with other Christians, and we can go on with that too. These are all sins. These are all disobedience to God. And we're not to use our liberty we have in Christ to put that into practice, okay? <laughs> as much as God wants me to stay away from uh, physical sins such as being a drunkard and etc., he wants me to be a part of praying and studying His Word, have fellowship with other Christians. The upbuilding of the kingdom of God, the church. We need to let this lost and dying world that the church that Jesus died for is the greatest kingdom that this world will ever knew or will ever know. Okay? And we are that kingdom, that church. So that means we have to work on ourselves, make ourselves that great. In the eyes of God. And it's not, it can be done, you see. God gives us the power in His Word and in prayer. He's with us, He hasn't forsaken us. He'll do for us just what He says. Do you believe that? You have that kind of faith in God and trust in Him. This morning, <clears throat> if you're not a Christian, the Bible says you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. By believing that message, one repents of their sins. Repentance is a change of mind and conduct toward the way that you're living and you turn towards God. The Bible says one must be baptized by immersion to have their sins washed away and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, not to help you speak in tongues, not to help you do miracles, but to help you live a faithful life unto Jesus and His Word unto the end. If you are a Christian this morning and God's speaking to you through His Word and through the Holy Spirit and you know that you need to make a decision for God, you need to do that this morning. You see, even Christians sin, but God has made provision for that. We don't have to be baptized again. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we will confess our sins to Him, speaking of Jesus, He, Jesus, is just and He's faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in His arms. In the arms of Christ my Savior.